What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? This is Lane Smith and Making Adams with Tuffy Talk. Uh, so much, thank you so much again for tuning in. This is our twelfth episode, yeah, of Tuffy Talk. Uh, and so on today's episode, we'll be talking a lot about uh, men's basketball, women's basketball, and uh, um, their their season-ending losses, uh, and kind of diving deep into them and talking about kind of what's coming up for them uh, in terms of next season, and also taking a look back and reviewing the season. So, uh, with that being said, we won't wait a second longer. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome to the 12th episode of Tuffy Talk. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to us by hitting the button in the bottom right-hand corner. And please like this video and check out our other great content that we have in our channel. And uh, please make sure if you haven't already uh, followed us on uh, Twitter and Instagram, follow us at Bang at Tuffy Talk Now uh, with all recent updates whenever we release new episodes. All right, so now we'll dive a little bit into men's basketball. Uh, obviously, uh, our, our men's basketball team on Thursday went against Colorado State in the NIT quarterfinals and fell short, 65-61. Uh, so we're going to kind of dive in a little bit to that. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the biggest things that really stood out to me was right before the game, I saw that Braxton Beverly had uh, 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 was announced to be out for the game due to a concussion. And uh, which, again, just proves to the point that, I mean, that poor guy just it just seems like things were just have not been going his way this season. Uh, I mean, just uh, such a fluke thing. Yeah, he just had so many injuries. I I hate it for him. And I I think it was like a elbow to the head. Um, He was in concussion protocol kind of thing. Yeah. But man, I just I just that dude just had a rough year of health issues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, especially, too, when you look at like that last shot at the end of the game, uh, um, I know, again, we'll dive a little bit deeper. But like the one thing that really stood out to me when it came to Braxton was at the end of the game when uh, we had that that play designed for Jericho to take that three to take the lead. And you kind of felt like maybe that was a situation if Braxton was available. Maybe that was his shot. I mean, I know Jericho for the season. Uh, he actually shot like 38% from three, which is, which is great. And Beverly shot 40%, but you just kind of felt like maybe that was a position where if Beverly was there, maybe he would have been the person designed to take that shot. And I mean, what a way to go out for him. That would have been, you know, to hit us, to have an opportunity yeah. like that. Yeah. I, I, so that play, I don't have as much issue. I know some state fans are going to take uh issue to um that play design. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I don't take so much issue to that because if it goes in, state fans think Keats is, you know, genius. genius. He grew up a great trip, a great play. Mm-hmm. Um, if And it's one of those shots, if it doesn't go in, then obviously he looks like that's a terrible call. I don't think the play, and I could be wrong, I'll have to go watch the interview again at the game. I don't think the play was exactly like the first look is to get Helms a three. I don't think that's the play. I think it was – to feed it to get it back down to Funderburg in the in the paint mm-hmm. and let him go to work because he was he had been really effective. I mean, at least in the first half, he was effective. Um, and I think the play was drawn up to where the second look could have been maybe like Helms having the decision to put it down to Funderburg or mm-hmm. put up a three. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't hate the play call personally. That's just me. I know some state fans will. Yeah. Um, I just I don't know. I mean, again, if it goes in, yeah. everybody's loving him. Yeah. But if it doesn't, now that it hasn't, everybody's like, "What the heck?" That's the play. So I don't really, I don't think it's that's fair. But well, and, be, yeah. and because the thing it, is, it would have been it would have been sweet if if Beverly had made the shot. Oh, if it was him taking the for shot for sure. Well, because the thing I was thinking about too is, I mean, from a uh, a a personnel perspective, because again, state shot five for twenty two from three. So again, I mean, it just proved again that we weren't refilling it. Two of them were made by Jericho. One was actually made by a DJ. Um, and then Shaquille made one, and then Max Farthing made one. Which I mean, shout out to Max for that was for that awesome. Shot. That was great. That was awesome. I was like, that was great. I, I remember seeing those things, saw him going down. There's like, who the heck's that guy? Yeah. And then I was like, he's got to be a bench warmer. And I said, that's Max Farthing, I think. Yeah. And then that was right when he pulled up for three. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. No kidding. So again, from a personnel perspective, though, again, I mean. A shot like that, I mean, because because the guys who have been shooting well this season from three point have been colluded, like Cam Hayes. He shot he shot thirty six percent from the three over the season. Um, Shaquille shot thirty four percent. So, but again, I mean, you see that shot as really being you know a, a guy being put into a, a a more experienced senior guy's hand, somebody who can handle that. Right. That's a big spot. 
and right. uh, and somebody who can who can dunk and who can throw it in. So the only guy who really fit those two um, criteria in terms of somebody who's experienced and somebody who can shoot the three was Jericho. Other than that, it would have been either Cam Hayes or Shaquille Moore. So again, it's it's the unfortunate thing that I mean, if we had Devin, if we had Braxton, if we had Thomas Allen, one of those guys that would have given us another person that or another personnel that we could have considered for that shot. Um, now, a lot of state fans might say, well, you didn't have to shoot the three. You could have just gone for the two. And it's like, well, again, just like you said, I mean, six of one half does another. If you if you make the right choice, you're a genius. If you're not, then not so smart. So uh, right. but I do agree. I mean, D- DJ had I mean, he had a heck of a he had a heck of a night. Uh, you know, he. It yeah. was the first half, really, was where he, he was, and then I, I mean, yeah. he had, a, I, he, had a, he, his stat line looks really good. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's mentioned thirteen points, nine rebounds, one assist, one steal. Yep. Yeah. Um, he did have two turnovers. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, he had a great night in the first half. I, I thought it was like he scored. A, I think was it nine or eleven in the first half, yeah. and then he scored two the second. Yeah. So yeah, thirteen points total. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought to me, when I look back, I don't, the only player that I really thought besides Funderburg, who did great was I thought Bates did pretty good. Yes. Um, and he finished with uh 13 and six, mm-hmm. uh, he had two blocks, yep. but, uh, I mean, Helms was your best player that night last night. He, I mean, you could argue that he had 15 points, four rebounds, five assists two well, you know, one steal. Um, he, I thought he was the best one uh, on the night as far as us getting a shot um, right I mean I just I just don't understand why or where the de- where where the adjustment came at halftime like why we didn't counter or if we did try I, I would love to know the logic behind what we did to adjust in the middle of the second half or in the first five minutes of the second half when we realize this isn't going well yeah. and what are we doing to address it I mean I don't I didn't see a ton of change, but I don't, but I, I'm not the coach. I didn't, I don't know what was drawn up. Well, and, and, you know, and we actually had somebody actually comment to us too on Twitter, basically asking like, you know, that one of the concerns they had about Keats was that they didn't feel like Keats does a lot during, of halftime adjustments. Usually like, you know, there's not a lot of games where you see, oh my gosh, like, you know, that second half, like, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, the effort there, I'm seeing the change to, to, uh, to cope with, you know, what the other team is doing. Um, which, you know, the biggest thing I I said to that, and, you know, again, coming from my time of being in the locker room with, with a team is that, you know, you, you, there's nobody that's behind those doors, you know, from a non-player slash staff perspective that, you know, is, is knowing what they're saying, you know, truly during the halftime. I mean, so it's kind of tough for us to really say, you know, is he really making adjustments? What is he doing? You know? Right. And uh, And I think people need to also be mindful too. Again, you don't have Beverly, who's another who's a shooter, mm-hmm. and I mean, I'm not saying this is a you know, reason why you lost. I I got a point to get to, but you didn't have Thomas Allen either. So people, I think, when you look back as a whole in the season, if we get to that point in the conversation, you you're you you don't have two. You have well, if you want to really include Daniels, that's we are, I mean, we're beyond that a little bit. Yeah. You don't have two, three of your best shooters on the team. Yeah. Probably you're the best shooter besides maybe Helen. So, yeah. but what what I think the reason we lost this game is personally i think a, a, fa- a big factor and i think you've seen that in the you see this in the fact that we went in the wins we've had this is a big reason why we win and when the pizza reasons we lost mm-hmm. in games in the past this reason we lost the freshman production yeah. we had hayes had 29 minutes seven points mm-hmm. he did have four rebounds four assists so that's a real that's a good stat line mm-hmm. darion sebron 29 points i mean uh, 29 minutes two points he did have eight rebounds. He did have one assist. Yeah. But 29 minutes and two points is not getting it done. Yeah. 29 minutes and seven points for Hazen's getting it done. Shaquille Moore, 24 minutes, eight points. Now, that's better. Um, he did have one rebound, two assists, one steal. But your uh, your three freshman players, your impact freshman players, and Hayes, Sebron, and Moore scored a total scored a total of 17 points and that is about let's see 58 plus 24 is 82 82 minutes 17 points in 82 minutes that is terrible garbage well and also too another stat that really stood out to me so you know i actually thought that one thing you were going to say was one of the bigger big reasons we lose, we've lost games this season is turnovers 
I, I think that's a recurring. Oh yeah, thing well that was turnovers. that's the other big factor too. And, I mean, I mean we had seventeen great, turnovers. Great point. great point. And so and just like you said too, I mean because actually if you take a look, so we had seventeen turnovers as a team. Twelve of them were by Hayes, Sebron, and Shaquille. So literally three players had, the had the combined twelve of our seventeen turnovers, which are young guys. Again, I mean that that's that's the thing is that this season has really pushed us to giving those young guys more production than we had originally expected, which is a great thing for the long term, but obviously not the most, you know, the best thing for for the short term. Which you know it it, it, it is what it is. And again, these minutes now will pay off for next season. That's, I hope they do. I hope they do. I, I think they will. They will. I think they will. They will. Yeah. There, there's it's just there's no doubt. There's no doubt these guys have the talent. They have the, the they have what it takes to to compete in the ACC and be and be successful in the ACC. It's just a matter of learning from those freshman mistakes. I mean, like you know, I saw there was one time where again Cam Hayes tried to you know lob the ball into DJ on the post and 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 him and DJ weren't on the same page and DJ wasn't looking and the guy stole the ball and you know Keith did his you know, daggummit, you know, reaction. And so again, I mean, that's a, you know, a freshman mistake, which he'll learn from and, you know, he'll, he'll watch tape on it and, and he'll improve on it for next season. At least again, just like you said, that's what we hope. But um, yeah, again, I mean, even the fact that even like bringing in Max Farthing, you know, he got in, he got six minutes, just like you said, that proves the unfortunate lack of depth we really had i mean you know when when like when that's a yeah when have we gotten to that point where we actually had to bring in max farthing which i mean hey he great. played six minutes he played six minutes good for him yeah. i mean good for him i mean i trust me i, there, I and he made I and he really, contributed so he yeah. he had three points in six minutes that's solid you know, that's can't yeah. argue with that so but yeah just like you said i mean like sebron he played 29 minutes and he only shot two shots like and he made one. So he, he made one, one. Two, I guess. So, so that's what I'm saying is that, I mean, it's not that he wasn't shooting well. He just wasn't putting up shots, which uh, in, in like Jericho shot 16, he shot six or 16. So 37, 38%. So again, it was just a, a matter of, I just don't think that the stars really aligned from what happened this season in terms of what Devin getting injured out for the season with Thomas Allen and Beverly getting injured. And just with the fact that we had to really rely on our young guys. And unfortunately they just, you know, weren't ready last night to get it done but um so i will say i will say this too i think another big factor of reasons why we lost is and, I, and we kind of mentioned we well we a little bit mentioned this but i think there's a lot more to this is big was interior defense yes they cut us up going into the paint yes, and we had no answer they had 40 points in the paint yep. now granted we had 34 so that's relatively balanced but 40 points in the paint yep. I mean, neither of the teams shot well. State finished with shooting 22%. Well, I say shot well behind the arc. Um, State shot 22% uh, from three-point range. That's five of 22. And Colorado State was even worse. Colorado State shot 13% from three. That's three for 23. That is terrible for most sides. But when you look at the field goal percentage, State shot 43%. Colorado State shot 44 so both teams are realizing that they weren't hitting the shots and they were just attacking the paint. And if that's that strategy or if that is just what, and you know, that's just the scheme. But to me, I thought State was going into the paint more because they were not shooting well. Mm-hmm. I thought Colorado State was going into the paint because they were recognizing the weakness. Yep. And um, they were, you know, just attacking us. And I mean... I thought we did a good job of, I think you could, I mean, I thought we did a good job of slowing down their, the guy, uh, uh, David Roddy, their six, five, basically a combo guard, combo, you know, guard forward kind of thing. Yeah. He had finished with 16 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, one steal. But the other guy that really killed us, I thought was their, I think his name was Stevens. Yeah. yeah. Stevens. He, been, he had 18 points and I think he was the uh, shorter guy. I think he's six foot tall, yeah. but man, that dude pestered us the whole night. And, um, you could tell him and Hayes were just mouthing off at each other, but you know they were just kind of. Stevens was cutting into the paint a lot. Uh, I mean, and a lot of Moore's their their center Moore's. He he played pretty well. He had um. Let's see what he had here. He had um. Well, I say he played pretty well. I'm thinking of the other guy, uh, Moore. Um, not Moore's. They have a guy M O O R S. They have another player M O O R E. I think I got those confused. Um, but they had two the two players finish in. 16, I mean, three players finished with 16 plus points. Yep. Roddy finished with a double double 16 11. So, mm-hmm. 
they just they just attacked us in the paint. We had no answer. Um, no. And I'm kind of surprised by that. I thought we switched. I think we switched to zone. Yeah. If I remember correctly, um, but it was pretty late in the game when we did that. Yeah. I thought it was the second half of the second half for the last 10 minutes mm-hmm. or maybe even less than that, which I thought was too little too late. So, well, and, and cause you know, one of the big things too, I know that that Keats love to do this season. And I think all state fans agree that they would love to have as if Thunderbird and Bates could both be on the court at the same time. Uh, and I, they have, they have at times. Yeah, they have. But again, the They've issue that that, way, I that, think. that that leaves is, is if um, one of them gets in foul trouble, and that really puts us in, in a handicap. And because like one thing that stands out to me is that uh, Bates didn't have a single foul, not one foul, which that's odd to wow. me because I know that, again, he's so, such a shot blocker. So you would think that, I mean, he easily would get a couple fouls, which I mean, I'm not necessarily complaining about, but I'm saying it's odd to me. I mean, I wonder, I mean, in terms of maybe like, you know, was he a little bit less aggressive since we have been having depth issues? Uh, I mean, it's yeah. it's a it's a weird thing to really think about. But yeah, it's uh um, you know, it, it's something for the long term to consider. And again, like Manny Bates, Jericho, they pretty much played the whole game. Uh, you know, Hel- Helms played 39 minutes, Bates played 38 minutes. So, um, you know, those the, those guys, I think, are really going to anchor us for for next season. Now, again, in terms of this off season, who knows? Trust me. I mean, like we could literally feel good that these guys are going to come back. That Funderburg, Beverly are probably gone. You Funderburg know. hasn't. Okay. He yeah. even said during his press, his post game interview, yeah. Funderburg even. Now, if y'all haven't seen that, I know probably ha- some of y'all have. Mm-hmm. That was really, um, really honestly touching to kind of see how Funderburg responded to the end of the game. I know people have questioned because they thought, you know, he tested the NBA waters. People kind of already have seen the tea leaves. He's gone this season. Yeah. Um, he didn't really have as great of a, he didn't have as great of a year as he did last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, when you see him getting, he's crying yeah. and the press media coverage after the game, you can't, you can't question how much that guy loved his team. I mean, he just, Amen. but he's at tears. So Amen. I just, he, but on one point was he even said during the interview, like, you know, this is his last game. He made a comment. He kind of said it quickly, but he said, you know, it's hard or he sad that it's his last game or hard, something like that in effect. So he's, he's not coming back. No, no, no. But again, I mean, stay fan i don't think there's a single stay fan that expect that expects him really to and, and again I mean, I mean good for him he, he's definitely done his work he's definitely done his time he's had overall a great season i don't i don't really see him doing much more than he has this season i mean sure i mean there's always room to do better but i mean it, it was a solid season so i mean yeah he should definitely go test and if he doesn't you know get into the g league whatever go play overseas get some money you know uh, so you know, let sure. me ask you this question Lane. let's take a step back the rest of the season's over now yep. do you what do you, how do you assess this season? Yeah, it's tough. Again, I know we had this conversation in terms of, you know, it's, it's a COVID year. It's, you know, we haven't played in front of fans. Obviously there's been a lot of, you know, one of the big balances and hopes for a season, especially at the beginning is to play teams where we can really evaluate ourselves, but also to get some quality minutes against some teams before we play the conference schedule, which obviously with this season, we jumped right into it. So, uh, you know, that could have been very beneficial for our, our younger guys. But so it, it's uh, in terms of evaluating it, I would I would really say that, again, there was a ton of minutes for Cam Hayes, for for Sebron, for Shaquille. And there was a lot of bright spots. I mean, there was a lot of spots where you really could point and go, a lot Man, of bright spots, these yeah. guys are going to be good. And you saw a lot of times where they where they were, you know, where they, they didn't play their best. But, you know, again, it's. I do, I do truly feel that, that, that Keats is trying to build a program and he's seen that of guys that are talented, but also too are willing to stick around and grow to, you know, to, to to do something special. And uh, so that's all that we can hope for is that that happens and they come back next season with, you know, with some experience, you know, being some more experienced guys and you adding a couple of big pieces that could really help us shoot the ball and, and run the court a little faster and, you know, we can make a big splash. Uh, so, uh, but it's, it's going to be a huge uh, question in terms of from the big man side, if we can get somebody with Bates, again, assuming that he sticks around. Uh, yeah, and I think another big thing, too, is if we're going to – we need to get we need to get some more big guards. Yeah, big guards. A lot of our guards mm-hmm. are short. I mean, like I know at one point we're – I mean, one point we're starting Hayes, Moore. I mean, Hayes, Allen, and uh, Beverly. Yeah. Beverly and Allen are, you know, six foot tall. And so one of them is playing the three. Yeah guarding against guys who potentially could be anywhere up to six, nine, if whoever's playing the three, yeah. six, eight, somewhere in there. So yeah. it's, that's not, 
No, you can't. You can't really. That, that that's a glaring weakness. So I think we need. I think we need those. You know, like a you know another post player with Funderburk. We know is leaving. Yeah. And then um, you know, bigger guards. But I, I still, like you mentioned, great. There's some great points you mentioned. I think when you mentioned the uh, the freshmen, some bright spots they've been. I just think back to the UNC game with Shaquille Moore. I think he had 17 points that game. Mm-hmm. Big reason we beat Carolina and and Raleigh and PNC Arena. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, more, I mean, uh, Hayes has been, I thought, at times the most uh, impressive freshman because he's been the most consistent. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you what, Sebron, man, that dude again. Like, I know people have started. That nobody on our team has the ceiling this guy has. He he, sky's the limit for him yeah. if he's got the talent. He's just with the raw athleticism. You can't really teach. It's just a gift. He just needs to put it together. Yeah. It's not there yet, obviously, but. I think a huge deal is if when, you know, having Helms back next year, he's going to be the leader. Um, you could argue it will be his team next year. Um, and then hopefully maybe we can get Daniels to come back. Um, that would be great. Uh, Bates coming back. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, Allen's going to come back because he's, he's already committed to being here unless yeah. I guess something, unless something happens. But well, um, well. I think to me, though, with Keats, I think there's still some big question marks. Sure. Like, um, again, I don't really see his trajectory in his four years. This is now the end of season four. Mm-hmm. It's not gotten better. Yeah. You could argue that it's maybe been on par, but I think it's, you know, marginally gotten worse in terms of the performance, particularly in postseason. Um, mm-hmm. Now, you know, I'd, again, how much is that due? That a lot of that's probably due to the two pauses we had, mm-hmm. um, inconsistency in team chemistry, and get, I get that. I totally get that, and I and I think there's a big asterisk that should go along this season. Yeah. But at the same time, a lot of other teams had to deal with that as well. Absolutely. Um, but then again, you saw, you know, Duke, Carolina, Kentucky, they all had really bad years. Yeah. So I struggled. I'm going to be very interested to see how this next season goes. But I think there's still some big question marks out there for Keats. Well, just like to Justin Williams said on our episode last week, I mean, you know, one of the glaring trends with successful teams year after year is having that long tenured coach. And so I, I think that from the point of that, you are seeing a team that competes hard every single week that plays proudly and supporting. And I mean, and, you know, really, you know, sporting, you know, that NC State logo that they have on their chest. Uh, um, you know, that's a huge, great building block to have with the team. And so, yeah, I mean, in terms of the next steps, you know, we just got to We got to see, we got to see what this off season holds, hang on, ho- hold on to this roller coaster of an off season and hope that we come off the other side, still strong and ready to make a big impact next season. All right. So now that we've touched on men's basketball, we want to touch on the big heartbreak, obviously for all state fans right now and the Women's basketball uh, losing Saturday night uh, to Indiana in the Sweet 16, 73 to 70. Obviously, was uh, a tough pill to swallow for all state fans, including uh, both of us. Um, you know, because I know that we talked uh, on episodes before and on live streams, basically saying, where do we set the bar for this team? And I know me personally, again, I, mean, I truly saw, especially once you saw what was going on with Texas and I was like, oh, I mean, Final Four has to be has to be the bar. I mean, s- simple as that. And so to fall in the Sweet 16, and and now we've gone to four, 14 Sweet 16s, 14, and we've only been to Elite Eight I'll one time. I'll back to 1982, just to be clear. Yeah, and and we've only been to the Elite Eight once. Uh, that that's a it, that's a tough uh, stat to look at. Um, so you know, obviously the big thing which I wanted to go ahead and address is obviously, I know a lot of state fans are really talking about it. Is the end of the game? Uh, I know that. Uh, Wes, you know, really took it hard in the post game uh, about the timeout that he called, uh, and I know the announcers were even really giving him a lot of uh, flack on uh, on screen about, you know, why did he take that timeout? Because it, it lost him the opportunity to take it to half court uh, after. Uh, what did he say? Like for those who didn't who don't who didn't hear it. Yeah, what was his answer? Well, so basically, uh, uh, you know, he said that. I mean, then he he made a mistake. At the end of the day, he understood that he he shouldn't have taken that timeout. He should have known that Indiana was going to take that time out to advance the ball. Um, so he should have waited and let Indiana do that. But since uh, uh, Westmore called that time out, they allowed Indiana still the ability to call the timeout after state called the timeout. So that way they could still advance the ball. 
But since State didn't have any right. timeouts left, once uh, Indiana made the basket, it didn't give State the ability to bring the ball up to court to half court because that's something in women's basketball that is unique. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and so obviously it's that was a big thing. And then, you know, obviously I know a big thing for, for me that I, I post on Twitter is saying uh, – it was odd to say the least the play choice at the end of the game where Raina Perez basically drove towards the basket and then, you know, passed out to Alyssa. And then it just seemed like she was not sure what to do. And it's just, you know, obviously that's frustrating to say the least, but it, again, it, it's, it's one of those things, just like you said, it, it's, we don't know. Yeah, I think it was in there. Not having the timeout, honestly. Yeah. I, I definitely don't think that helped now. I mean, do I think it uh, was smart for West to uh, sub in? Cause I know, they subbed uh, Elisa out, and then uh, after Indiana made the basket, since he didn't have timeout, he just subbed Elisa in. So, uh, so that way, it kind of gave him his players the second to kind of, you know, okay, let's get calm, cool, collected here. Let's figure out what we're about to do here to go try and make this basket to go to overtime or win this thing. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, go to overtime because we were down by three. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it, it's for those yeah. who didn't see the score, it was 73 70 Indiana. Make sure we got that. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to go down and make a three to take it to overtime. So that's why it didn't make sense. Why would Raina drive to the basket? But again, maybe there's something there we didn't we, we didn't see. Uh, so just I, you know. I think it was is driving in with the thought of picking it out. But also, to, but also, too, and that that's a big assumption that Indiana is it a because that is assuming that Indiana is not going to know the situation because if Indiana is smart, they go, okay, go ahead and make the two pointer. Go ahead, please. That's, that, yeah, that's not going to hurt us. You. So, yeah. So that's, that's why I'm kind of confused. Cause again, that's a big assumption that Indiana is basically has to make a mistake. Um, so, you know, kind of digging, kind of digging deeper here. So the biggest, there, there was a couple of things that really stood out to me. So Indiana as a whole, for those who don't know, I mean, man, they are a strong team. I mean, like literally, they, they, yeah, they're a good team. Really- so now they shot terribly from three. They, they shot fourteen percent. Yeah, two for fourteen. Yeah, but yeah. it took the way I look at it. It took everything they had, you know, minus shooting well from three, <laughs> to beat. I mean, they played their hearts out. Yeah. And if you're gonna lose, I'd rather lose like that, honestly. Yeah. Well, and especially in a situation where it we basically what we were known for the whole season in terms of having these great comebacks and, and like, you know, but Boston college, we were down by 13 and the fourth, in the fourth quarter and came back and won. And same thing here. We were like, and I, we tweeted out saying, don't count us out. Like, you know, I know we're down. It may seem like we're out, but don't count us out. And we came back. And so, I mean, you know, that, that's another kind of good thing too, is again, we really did push to try and, 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 you know, make up for the slow start in the first half. Now, the biggest thing, which stood out to me is Indiana, all five of their starters, uh, were double digits in points. So yes. every single starter, which again, just proves again, how uh, they're not reliant on that one, one person, which is, which is huge for any team. Um, and uh, yeah. that one, I'm going to tell you what I thought was a big factor. I thought their point guard, Pat Berg, mm-hmm. he was a big reason they, we, they, they beat us. Yeah. She was giving Perez all kinds of fits and it was glaring. I mean, Perez was bothered by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, we had, I think it was like 13, 14 turnovers just in the first half. Yeah, so we had 10 steals. They stole the ball 10 times from us. Wow. Yes. And on the turnovers, they had, well, you know, we had um, 17 turnovers total in the game, but yeah. Yeah. And and because, you know, one of the things, too, which I saw last night was uh, in the third quarter, especially over the the first two games of the tournament against uh, North Carolina A&T and USF, we were dominant in the third quarter. Dominant. And actually, between the second and third quarter, we were actually outshot 44 to 26 between the second and third quarter, 44 to 26. Uh, so, I mean, you know, now again, I mean, we started off strong, uh, leading 22 to 14 in the first in the first quarter. And then we in the fourth quarter, we were uh, we, we outscored in 22 to 15. But again, it's just it's frustrating, you know, in that, you know, for Indiana to you know have that big you know end of the half and then come out of the half you know, establishing that momentum. And, uh, it was, you know, it, it took everything that we had to, to fight that off. Um, and you know, cause, cause one thing as well that that stood out was that, so basically besides our five starters of Jada is right now being Jada Boyd, Jakia Brown, Turner, uh, Liz Gunane, uh, Kai Clutchfield and, uh, Raina Perez, nobody else really, you know, 
did too much besides uh, Deanna Bryant, too. I mean, again, big hats off to her to really step in um, for those lost minutes from the Kayla Jones injury. Just definitely big hats off to her. I mean, she really stepped well, nobody up. Nobody else yeah. scored except those six players. Deanna Bryant made two points. That's right. It. right. So that would be six. I'm saying that would be yeah, yeah, yeah. one, two, four, five, six. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, it's uh, – if, I mean, you know, it, it, and, and it, it puts a lot of pressure on those on those guys to step up. And again, unfortunately, Jakia didn't have her best game. She shot three of 13 from the field, one of five from the three. So she had a rough game. And so, and, and you know, Lisa didn't have her best game. I would say more on the defensive side. Uh, she didn't have her best game on the, on the offensive side. Now, I know a lot of state fans would say, well, I mean, you know, the the refereeing was obviously – Interesting. I mean, you know, State shot only seven free throws. Uh, Indiana shot 17. So huge discrepancy there. Well, I don't think that's why we lost the game. No. But yeah. It's, well, because well, I mean, because one of the things that, you know, was interesting, I mean, that I'm trying to figure out is, I mean, so we shot from the field 50%. We shot from 3.47%. Indiana shot 47% from the field and 14% from three. So you go, so how did we lose that game then? And that's one of the places you kind of look as well. You do see that they had 10 more attempts at scoring points than we did. So, you, got, you know, that, that definitely could have helped. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. a big one. I'll tell you a big one. Please. I mean, I said turnovers. Yeah. 17 turnovers. Mm-hmm. 10 of them were steals. And 20 points off those turnovers they scored on us. Yeah. Those are transition buckets off of turnovers. So that's, 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 that, that's you know, 20 points. That could have you you know you could have gone your way yeah and it could have swung either way and you just and you let it go now we I mean and not to me and and, and another stat that kind of goes along with it or two actually nine second chance points eighteen fast break points for Indiana had, for Indiana yeah we had so they had again seventeen turnovers uh, ten steals mm-hmm. of those ten steals seventeen turnovers. 20 points off turnovers, 18 fast break points, nine second chance points. Second chance points is more rebounds. That's, you know, that's, but yeah. I mean, 20, 20 points off turnovers, 18 fast break points off of 17 turnovers. That's how you lose the game. Yep. And again, I kind of goes back to that Indiana point guard, Pat Berg. She looked like she could hurt somebody, man. She was, she was so fired up in that game yep. and uh, tough. Yeah. Um, uh, but she was she gave Perez all kinds of problems, and um, that's another stat that I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, Indiana had forty two points in the paint; we had twenty eight. Mm-hmm. They outscored us in the paint fourteen points, yeah. and they're not as dominant in the paint as we are, which is kind of surprising. Yeah. Um, to me, I similar. We, we were just talking to talking about the state game um, where, where men's basketball, where Colorado State beat us, and um, they really were scoring it at us whenever they want to indiana seemed like they we had no answer for them attacking us and it was basically no matter where it was inside the three-point line they just were cutting us up and it was really frustrating i'll tell you another thing that that was big Mm -hmm. zero offensive rebounds maybe maybe zero we had zero offensive rebounds wow and again they had nine second chance points so they had and they had eight offensive rebounds so eight offensive rebounds they had our zero Wow. So I don't know what. Yeah. I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, yeah, it's not going to win you any games either. No. Not even, not even one. Not even one. Yeah. That's it's it's frustrating, and it's it, it, and by the way, too. Uh, I know I was saying Deanna Bryant or something like that, but Genesis Bryant. I apologize for that. And uh, you know, one of the big questions I know on Twitter that when I reached out about questions was the question about how much of an impact it was it that Kayla Jones wasn't available. And, you know, I, I took, you know, you took a look at the stats. So on average, Kayla Jones played roughly 29 minutes a game. She shot, uh, you know, uh, 40, uh, 49% from the field, 42% uh, percent from the three. And I mean, she averaged, you know, roughly uh, 12 points a game, uh, you know, so, I mean, it, it definitely was was because even Westmore has said that she is serves as kind of the glue for this team, and uh, especially it would have been nice to have somebody, you know, who 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 you know can produce and has the experience to sub in for Jada or Kai, you know, and and you know not lose that production, you know, and uh, um, so but 
so yeah, I mean, I definitely think in my opinion, it definitely made a difference. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. Having, you know, having the extra person to show off that depth, but also too, that somebody that could shoot the ball, you know, if, if Jakia wasn't feeling it, then, you know, give it to Kayla or, you know, you know, give it to somebody else, you know, and get them to make some baskets for us when we needed it. Um, so that, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you have some kind of thoughts on it too, Megan. Well, I mean, at the Kayla, Kayla's impact player, you don't have her. That's a big, that's a, that's a lot that, that's a lot of points that are, you, you have to figure out where we're going to get those points from mm-hmm. and other, other girls have to step up and make those plays. So yeah. I think a lot of them did. Um, I'm going back to look at these numbers again. Um, you know, Indiana shot great from the field, 47%, 47%. But three-pointers, 14%. I was, looking at, I was looking, looking at free throws. You mentioned the comment about the officiating. They attempted 17 free throws, and we attempted seven. Right. And I know, I know we didn't foul that hard, and it wasn't that inconsistent. Right. So they had 10 more attempts than we did. Now they and But they only made – Nine of them. So they they shot fifty two percent from free throw right from free throws, mm-hmm. and we shot seventy one percent. Yeah, you know, fourteen percent from three, fifty two percent from free throws. You're not going to win many games. No. Um, and and we shot fifty percent from the field, forty seven percent from three, seventy one percent free throw. We shot really well. Yeah. The bit. I mean, to me, just the glaring reason we lost. And again, I I know having uh, Kayla Jones would have helped in this area too. I think she's a very good rebounder, but um, again, turnovers. I, that's why we lost, in yeah. my opinion. There's no, how do we lose to a team shooting 14% from three and 52% free throws? I think you're knocked on the head. And if we shoot 50%, 47% from three, and 71% free throws, mm-hmm. and we shoot 10 less attempts than they do, it's, got, it's, 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 it's somewhere else besides there, and it's, and it's turnovers. They, they made us pay when we turned the ball over. They did. Credit to them, and I will say one last thing: the girl who the the, the player for um, Indiana who made those last two free throws, you know, those were clutch for them. I mean, she saw. I think this made a point. She's only like a fifty percent free throw shooter. Made both of them. Yeah, she made both of them. Yeah, huge. And that made you know it made it made the, our last position even harder. And um, I just you know for her, I know obviously like I'm also saving, but that was big for her. Yeah, and that was big for her team. So. You just kind of you say congrats to them. Yep. Um, better team won that night. It mm-hmm. wasn't us, I say. Um, but you know, you hate it. And I think when you look back on the whole season, you know, going back on it, I, I'm I'm very proud of this team. Oh, no. You know, you look back second straight ACC title, third straight sweet sixteen appearance. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of programs are saying that right now. Yeah. No, I mean, again, it, it's, 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 uh, there's, there's, it's, it's easy to say that there's so much to look forward to with this team and that there's no reason for any state fan to worry whatsoever. Simple as that. So, uh, you know, just definitely hats off to this team, uh, hats off to these ladies, uh, you know, and, you know, how they handled this season and, you know, how they took, you know, the, the fight on the chin and, you know, really gave us, you know, some great wins with wins over South Carolina and Louisville winning a second straight AC title. So, Congratulations to them on all they did, and uh, you know we we can't wait to see what's going on next year. So uh, so with that being said, Wolfpack Nation, thank you so much again for tuning in. Uh, please make sure again if you haven't already, subscribe to us by hitting the button in the bottom right hand corner. Please follow us on uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> follow us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Tuffy Talk Now, and uh, also to please make sure to like this video and check out our other content. And uh, uh, we look forward to hearing from you all soon. So thank you all so much again for the su- much support. Please stay safe, and we'll talk soon. So with that being said, as always, go Pack, y'all.